thank you so much for all the wonderful feedback that you've been giving me with regards to the YouTube videos and how much this information has been of help and benefit to you. Thank you to all my followers who have engaged with me on other platforms and YouTube as well and for your comments. I thought that for the next few videos, I'll probably address some of the questions and the comments that have been made in response to a few of the videos and I thought I'd rather do them as a series of videos rather than replying within the comments themselves. For this video I'm going to be answering a few important nuances if you will of the options and the questions some of the readers have asked on fibromyalgia. So firstly I think Asif had been asking about the role of medications and Asif you mentioned that your mom's taken nerve medications and antidepressants and they worked for three months but when she stopped them the pain came back. Generally what I do suggest in my clinical practice is that patients try these medications for a period of 8 to 12 weeks and after that I try to get them to reduce it. So start to taper it or reduce one of the medications and see whether the pain is manageable or flares up. Often we find that in conditions like fibromyalgia where there is a nervous system sensitivity, the effect of these nerve medications do wear off and patients can experience an increase in pain. So it is possible that they may need to take the medications on a more long-term basis. But given the side effect profile of these drugs, I think every three to six months, we should be making an attempt to try tapering the drugs or at least reducing it by 10 or 20% each time. So for example, just to put it in context, if you're on amitriptyline, 10 or 20 milligrams, then after a three month period, I'd say reduce it by 10 milligrams and see if the pain still stays within control. And if you start to notice it going back to a higher intensity, then go back on the dose again. I hope that's helpful. It's not a clear answer, but you have to be ready to taper and go back if you do need it. Joe has asked another very relevant question around the role of how pain can change when you have a flare-up or when you have an infection. As I outline in my book, The Pain-Free Mindset, the nervous and immune system are very, very deeply interlinked. So any kind of infection, any kind of stressful episode that brings about an activation of the immune system is also going to bring about a flare-up in your pain. And that can mean that it comes out in a variety of symptoms there. I think in Joe you've identified that in your case there's also been the effect of COVID and you've talked about the potential uh, complication that things might have got worse after the vaccine. I think this is a very hotly uh, debated and very controversial topic at this time whether how much of this is related to the vaccines and how much of this is a consequence of how the nervous system and immune system is being sensitized. I think there are no clear answers at this time. Uh, there's a lot of debate going on and even in the scientific circles we haven't come to a consensus. So I just say watch this space and I'll keep you informed as the evidence becomes much more clearer and we get much direction from our Royal Colleges or the government. And for the next set of videos, hopefully I'll be looking at a few more of your questions and hopefully I'll be able to answer them satisfactorily. But in the meantime, keep those questions coming. Thank you for engaging with the videos and I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found the content useful and of value to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button for more videos to be notified.